Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our celebration of National Black Child Development Week, which is being sponsored by the Southwest Ohio Association for the Education of Young Children. I'm Denise Stewart. I'm a member of the board of Southwest Ohio AEYC, and I co-chair the Equity Committee. Today, I have with me two phenomenal women that I have known since 2015, when both of our programs were part of the Early Head Start Child Care Partnership that's sponsored by the Cincinnati Hamilton County Community Action Agency. They are Gary Davis, owner of Water Lily Learning Center, and Ryan Caldwell, owner of Waverly's Hope Child Care. Thank you, ladies. Why don't you take a, a moment just to introduce yourselves for me. Gary, we'll start with you. Hello, everybody. My name is Gary Davis. I am the owner and administrator of Water Lily Learning Centers. We have two locations, one downtown off of Liberty Street. We call that our Pendleton location, which is a five-star rated center. And we have a center out in Eastgate where we are a three-star rated center. Thank you. Quite an Okay, Ryan? Hello, I am Ryan Caldwell. I am the owner of Waverly's Hope Child Care in Mount Airy, which is a five-star rated center, as well as Waverly's Hope CWC in Madisonville, which is also a five-star rated center. Well, thank you both. And that's quite an accomplishment to achieve five stars and step up to quality, even three stars with the, these days. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Okay. Well, answer this question for me. Um, what drew you to the field of early childhood education? Well, Ryan and I probably came from two different directions. Um, actually, I was working in corporate America where I lost my job. And it was at that time that I decided that I wanted to work for myself. And I found that opening a child care center was a low barrier to entry. I didn't need a lot to get into the field of entrepreneurship in this area. So I started my own child care center in 2012. Okay, thank you, um, Gary. How about you, Ryan? And I myself opened my child care center and was drawn to early childhood education because of a family need. I had a child that was born with a condition and needed additional care and in seeking out child care centers could not find something to meet my standards, so decided to start my own. Okay. Very good reasons to get started in this field. Okay. Okay. Um, were there any challenges that you had as you were trying to open your programs, such as finding families or ways to support families' needs? Um, as far as opening the center, um, the challenges that I faced was really just finding information, trying to make sure that I stayed up to date on things. So it was really a resource. Thing. Okay. Issues with. Yeah, and then when I initially opened my first location, finding families was an issue, actually. Um, I had opened my center in a place where I had not done my adequate due diligence and thought that that was a place that needed child care when they did not, for many reasons. Um, however, I've been able to overcome that um, issue. But like Ryan said, one of the ongoing problems or obstacles that we do have is lack of resources. Um, not having access to information fast enough or not having access to information at all has been something that we struggle with in order to uh, continue to maintain and support our programs. Okay. I'm sure that's a struggle that's faced by so many child care providers. Thank you all for sharing that. Okay. What do you think that the impact is on the children in your programs and their families, knowing that the owners and directors of these programs look like them? Ryan? Um, I think that it helps to provide a level of comfort oftentimes for our families. It allows us to build a positive rapport, um, but I also think that sometimes it, it can be an issue as far as them adhering to our rules and regulations as well. Okay. I, I agree with Ryan. I think that it is nice to be that face um, 
for them to see that it can be done by somebody that looks like them, that it is not impossible. Um, but I do feel that at times there is a lack of care, concern, or respect for us as minority-owned businesses. No, well, that's an interesting thought. I'm wondering what might be behind that, but that could be a discussion for another another whole hour. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks for sharing that. Okay, why don't you tell me about some of the community collaborations that you're involved in that have helped support your children and their families? So we um, both partner with Community Action Agency, um, Early Head Start, Ryan partners with Head Start. Um, we partner with 4C for Children, um, Cincinnati Preschool Promise, um, Okra. Uh, we also partner with the Public Library and we have a couple of uh, smaller uh, individuals that we partner with, um, like Webby Dance and uh, what is the other one called? Webby Dance uh, Soccer Shots. And Ryan and I, and I both partner with Delta Dental as well. We okay. also, um, at our facility, um, and Gary partners with CACFP, the Federal Food Program. And we partner with Urban League, Santa Maria, and Ohio Means Jobs. Okay, very good. Lots of community resources out there. And for those of you listening, OCRA stands for the Ohio Child Care Resource and Referral Association that maintains records of teachers and directors trainings in the area of early care and, and education, and also provides um, access to some funding for programs, as well as teach scholarships for teachers who wanna continue their education. Okay, thank you. Do you have any advice for someone who might be thinking about starting their own child care center or just becoming an entrepreneur in general? I would say make sure you had some money set aside because you're going to need it. Your funding sources may not always line up the way that you think that they will. And find someone in your field that you can connect with and bounce ideas off of. Yeah, I, I think it would be important to have a coach or a mentor, even if you do have to pay them to help you um, overcome your obstacles a lot sooner so that you have someone that can help you save time and or money to reach your goals of getting open, getting funding and getting children in the door. And I will also just say, be resilient. Things are going to happen. And just don't take those things personally. You just have to be the bigger person. You fall down eight times, just get right on back up and everything is going to be fine. And it will all be worth it in the end. Um, as long as we are continuing to focus on providing quality care for families and children um, and let that be our goal. I think that um, that will help you be a better entrepreneur and be a better provider in the child care industry. Okay. Now we are nearing two years of going through the pandemic. And the year 2020 was a horrific time for all of us when our child care programs had to completely shut down, schools had to completely shut down. Tell me about some of the challenges you all faced trying to operate during those times. Now I work for Learning Road that at that time operated 14 child care programs in both Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. And we operated two what were called pandemic child care sites, one in each state. And uh, it was a real challenge, but share with me um, what you all did. Were you all operating as pandemic child care sites? Well, we were only open for about two weeks. Um, we found that it was difficult for the families to navigate whether or not to send their children into the facility um, just because COVID was new and we didn't have any idea what was going on. And also as a result of the unemployment funding that was received, the teachers just were able to make more money staying home and they actually prefer just to stay home instead of coming into the center. So um, that was a couple of things that we had to, um, that we were faced with. And so we just decided to close for the rest of the time. Okay. How about you, Ryan? The same thing for us. We were open for the same two weeks and the issues were pretty much identical. Okay. Yeah, it was a real challenge. And then when we were allowed to reopen with the smaller group sizes and ratios, a lot of our staff did not return. 
Mm. You know, for some of the same reasons, I think some out of fear that they might get infected because there was no vaccine at the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then um, the, the, just the idea that a lot of our staff members had school age children who were engaged in remote learning and you can't have a six year old or a seven year old sitting in front of a computer trying to get their instruction all day. There's there's a lot of um, supervision that's needed. And so they felt compelled to stay with their children. But how, I think that the staffing crisis is continuing. Tell me how it's impacting your programs right now. Well, I would say for us, we, um, we've we maintained some of the same staff, but it's harder to get new staff in at this time. That has been a little more difficult. And then when we do get staff to just maintain them has been difficult. So we haven't been able to really increase our enrollment a lot because we haven't been able to increase our staffing numbers. Yeah, we, we haven't been able to reach our fulling staffing capacity since COVID. Um, There have been teachers in, but there also been those same teachers out. We have maintained most of our core staff, which is very important. Um, And we just try to do things to keep them from burnout um, and to keep them engaged and motivated to be at work. But it gets hard when you are not fully staffed um, like you could be in order to maintain the best quality available. So we are putting incentives in place and doing things to try to attract and retain people. But like you said, it is hard. Um, And I don't know if people have left the field altogether or, you know, just by some experience I'm having in customer service in other places, you know, maybe people just aren't working right now. (laughs) I don't know. But um, we have seen over the past three weeks an increase of applicants and actually people showing up for interviews. So maybe things are starting to change. <laughs> That's a positive note because I think all child care programs have experienced a, a, a similar thing. The great resignation has not led to a lot of new staff coming in the door, especially when they can go to Amazon and make two or three dollars more per hour. Mm-hmm. And for some people, they just want a job, not necessarily a job teaching young children. And so that makes it very difficult. Right. Or we would call it a career in early childhood education. <laughs> Absolutely. Which all each one of us has chosen and has stayed in and like so many others. But then there are others who it's for whom it's just a job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes it. And of course, the funding from um, the, like you mentioned earlier, the reimbursement rates that you get from the state, even for a five-star rated program, do not adequately cover the costs of quality childcare, which all of us are committed to providing. And we can't just make our families bear the brunt of the cost. That just, uh, that's just too um, hard to impose on anyone. Okay. Okay, well, thank you so much for um, sharing your ideas, sharing your experiences. And since this is National Black Child Development Week, do you have a message that you'd like to send to the children and their families? Yes, take advantage of any early childhood education opportunities. Education is imperative and make sure as a parent you are involved and that your voice is heard. I agree. If you are looking for an early childhood education environment, do your due diligence. Um, Every center may not be a good fit for your child, but you need to, as a parent, find the perfect place for them to go because they are spending their whole days there. And then, as Ryan said, learn how to advocate for your child and positively in the right way um, and be a partner with the child care centers in helping your child to learn and grow. Uh, we are all there doing the best that we can every single day, and we want the best outcomes for your children at all times. Excellent. And um, I ditto everything that you said. It's, it's so important to get children accustomed to uh, uh, learning early because they are, their, their brains are like sponges. And we need to give them the best start possible 
so that when they hit kindergarten and beyond, they're prepared to be there. Okay, once again, I wanna thank you, uh, Ryan and Gary, for sharing your time, sharing your advice, sharing your experiences. Thank you for participating in our first ever celebration of National Black Child Development Week. I just wanna send you good wishes and um, good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you once again.